Greetings and welcome back. Today we are going to study the appointment of the chair of board of directors. And the appointment of the chair of the board of directors is a critical decision that uh, significantly impacts the effectiveness and the direction of the company's governance. And the chair plays a pivotal role in leading the board, ensuring its effectiveness and representing the company's interests. In this lesson, we'll highlight the process of appointment. We also look at the criteria for selection. Welcome to the lesson. So what is the process of appointment? Process. Now, in appointing the chair of the board of directors, the Nomination committee plays a very key role. The nomination committee. This appointment is done through the nomination committee. Typically, a nomination committee, which is composed of independent directors, is responsible for the identification and evaluating potential candidates for the chair position. This committee comprises of independent directors. It is this committee that is responsible for identifying and evaluating potential candidates for the chair position. And the committee considers factors like experience, leadership skills, industry knowledge, uh, and also alignment of, or alignment with the company's objectives and vision, values, goals, etc. Now, after identifying potential candidates and coming up with, say, a name of one who can occupy the position of the chair of the board, then such a potential candidate we need the board's approval the nomination committee is a committee of the board after evaluating after identifying and evaluating potential candidates for the chair position this committee then has to present the name to the board for approval. The nomination committee presents its recommendation to the full board for approval. And the final decision is usually made through a vote. The decision is made through a vote. The board then votes, considering the candidate's qualifications and the board's collective judgment. In some instances, the candidate that is approved at the board is not necessarily um, does not does not always assume the role of the chair, but such a candidate may also need the approval of the shareholders. Shareholder approval. Shareholder approval. Now, in some cases, particularly for publicly traded companies, shareholder approval may be required for the appointment of the chair. In some companies, the board's approval is final. But in certain cases or instances, the chair who is voted at the board may still need to be approved by the shareholders. And that ensures that the person chosen has the support of the company's owners. The person that was chosen to be the chair of the board has to be approved by the owners through shareholders' approval. So these are three key steps in the process of appointing 
the chair of a board of directors. One, nomination committee, which comprises of individual directors that is responsible for the identification and evaluation of uh, potential candidates. Then uh, this committee, which is a, a committee of the board, presents the name to the board, the full board, for approval. Presents the name or its recommendation to the full board for approval, which then votes for or against the name that is submitted to it by the nomination committee. In some instances, this um, individual that was, was, was approved by the board may require the shareholder's approval. So these are three key steps in the process of appointing the chair of a board. Let us now study or identify the criteria for selection. Criteria for selection. Criteria for selection. The first criteria is leadership skills. The nomination committee has to consider leadership skills. Leadership skills. The chair should possess strong leadership qualities, including the ability to facilitate, uh, to facilitate discussions, to build consensus, and guide the boards, the board towards effective decision making. Leadership. The one to chair a board must possess leadership skills. Two, experience and expertise. Experience and expertise. The chair should have relevant experience in companies, industry, and related field, as well as a deep understanding of corporate governance principles. The chair must understand deeply the principles of corporate governance. That is what the nomination committee should consider when identifying the chair of the board. Three, independence and objectivity. Independence and objectivity. The chair should uh, be independent and he ought to be independent of uh, the company's management. The chair should be independent of the company's shareholders. That is important in order to ensure unbiased decision making. It has to be independent and objective. Four, the chair should possess communication skills. Communication and interpersonal. Communication and interpersonal skills. The chair should be an effective communicator, capable of building relationships with fellow board members, with the management, stakeholders. Five, the criteria cannot be complete without integrity and ethical standards. Integrity and ethical standards. The chair should demonstrate high ethical standards, should demonstrate high ethical uh, standards as well as ethics, serving as a role model for the board, serving as a role model for the company. Should be a man or a woman of integrity, a man who adheres to ethical standards. That is what the nomination committee has to consider when selecting a chair. So these are five factors to consider or criteria for selection. Now, in conclusion, the term of appointment for the chair can be, can vary depending on uh, 
the company's governance structure, like the articles of association or even bylaws. And some companies have fixed terms, while others allow for reappointment based on performance and the board's discretion. And it's also important for the board to have a robust succession plan in place for the chair position because that's, that then ensures smooth transition of leadership and minimizes disruption in the event of the departure of the chair. So that will be the end of that lesson. That is appointment of the chair of the board. Let me give you today's assignment before we take a break. Appointment of the chair. Question number one. What qualifications and experience are considered essential for a candidate to be appointed as the chair of the board? Two. What is the process of selecting and appointing the chair and who is involved in this decision? So these are two questions. Please answer the questions. In our next lesson, we are going to study the appointment of the CEO. Bye.